What's up, everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. I got Swami in the house from Malted in Montreal. Today we are doing a blind tasting. He's got two samples I sent him. I've got two samples he sent me. We also have these lovely shirts that we've exchanged. I got a Malted in Montreal shirt. He's got a Whiskey in the Six shirt. Swami, why don't you say hello, buddy? Hi. <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? It's uh, Malted in Montreal. Fami from Malton in Montreal. Sorry, I'm just setting up everything. Uh, my internet went off just before we went on, so now I'm all flustered getting everything together. Yes, Rob sent me two wonderful samples. I sent him some good stuff, too. We're going to be testing it out and uh, seeing uh, who can guess what it is. Um, I won't fault him if he uh, can't figure out what I sent him because he probably never tasted what I sent him. And I'm guessing I've never tasted what he sent me. So I'm going to try my best. So we'll see. <laughs> All right, well, I think it's going to be fun. Um, I sent, I just text um, somebody the correct bottles on your end. Let's see if they jump into the chat. If they don't jump into the chat, then we uh, I'll send them to somebody else that's actually in the chat. Uh, we have quite a few people already. We have 22 people. We got Eric Wait, What's up, brother? Chris Santa Cruz in. Uh, Santa Cruz is already dropping some heat with uh, Super Chat. Thank you so much, brother. Appreciate it. Um, Claire the Third's in the house. The Dan Trout. Malt Malted Man Cave Keith. What's up, buddy? Um, Go Habs. I'm going to say that's either Mark or Drew from the Scotch Four Dummies. What's up, buddy? Uh, Tony DiTomaso. What's going on, brother? Mark is in the house, Jason Fisk, uh, Daniel Whiskey Throttle. He's been giving me shit for the last 20 minutes, asking me when we're going to go on. <laughs> well, it's, I'm happy he's giving you shit instead of me for a change. How's that? So, he gives me shit on a regular basis, too. So, yeah, it's all right. It's all right. I love, I love that fat guy, he's better than Santa. Sent me a really nice uh, uh, present a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if you saw the samples he sent me. A, yeah, he, he sent me a bottle. Of, he also sent me a bottle of Spay Tenny, which is it's really nice. Is it? Yeah, I, I've never tried it. Uh, well, I'll be reviewing it very shortly. It's a really nice selection that he sent me out, and I really appreciate it, Daniel. And uh, Julia is awesome. So love them both. Cool. Um, <laughs> Eric Wade saying, spoiler alert, Swami sent Rob three bottles of Jim Beam Devil's Cut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, would, I, I, love, I like Rob too much to, to, to make him taste Devil's Cut. I got to remember that I'm on Rob's channel tonight, so I won't be swearing. So for those of you who are waiting for me to do that, it won't happen. It's still, it's still somewhat early, so there might be some of my students tuning in just in case. I don't know. No I don't know if they actually watch me. I hope they don't, and I always get mad at them if they subscribe to me or anything like that. But uh, you never well, know. Are you, are you are you a teacher for seniors, though, or are you a teacher for, like, sophomores and stuff like that? They're, well, they're in grade 8, so they're, like, 13, 14, right? Oh, they're, yeah. They're way too <laughs> much to be watching. Don't, don't watch, kids. Wait till college. <laughs> Uh, a couple of other people joined us. That's crazy. He was recently on your channel. Cool guy. Um, yep. Samuel Cast. What's up? C.R. McE. I don't think I've seen him in the chat or her in the chat before. What's going on, buddy? Dram Dude's in the house. What's up? What's Peter up, Granny? House. Um, I'm just I'm coming I'm going on to YouTube on my laptop so I can watch uh, the comments because I can't see because right now I'm on my phone because my Wi-Fi has been uh, really screwy on my laptop so I want to check them out. Yeah, right buddy. Well, I'm wearing um I'm wearing a damp malted in Montreal shirt because my wife is like I said earlier she's like an Italian nun now she likes to throw everything into the washing machine even if I don't tell her to so. It was it was already in, and I'm like looking for the shirt everywhere. I'm like, babe, where's my Malted in Montreal shirt? It and, looks great on you. You look you look spectacular in it. Thanks, buddy. So, um, Appreciate it. It's a good advertising for me. I, I'm looking all right in yours. I don't have the Daniel uh, boobies or anything like that coming on there. <laughs> Daniel wore my shirt on his show, and uh, yeah, <laughs> it's quite the look. Daniel is one handsome fellow. Yes. <laughs> 
Moob City. <laughs> oh, I love it. Welsh Toro's up late. He's in the house as well. What's up, Welsh? Um, yeah, quite a few people already in. We got 36 already. So I'm going to start with uh, pouring some of these out. Like I said, I sent I sent um, Scott the ah the bot the samples, but I haven't seen him. He messaged me nice. I don't think he realizes we're live though. So oh, so should I message Scott and tell him what I gave you? Well, um, you know what? Since he's not in the chat yet, let's. I'm gonna send it over to Daniel instead. Maybe you do the same, and then that makes it a little easier. All right, I'll send Daniel. What? All right, so I'm pouring. This is the non-peated stuff you sent me. That's pretty easily known to be non-peated. And then you sent me one that's a peated sample. I sent you a non-peated and a peated as well. Okay, cool. And then I, just as a backup, I'm going to send it to Chris uh, Santa Cruzin just so that we cover our bases. So Daniel right. does try to uh, sabotage my guesses or your guesses. Can you wait here? I'm going to be right back. I'll Absolutely. be literally right back in a second. Absolutely. Well, you'll, you'll have to wait here. It's your show. <laughs> Connor is in the house. What's up, buddy? No, you haven't missed much yet. Um, Tim just joined us as well. What's going on? We got Rob K. What's up, buddy? What are, what's everybody drinking tonight? Why don't you guys share in the chat? Um, Swami sent me two samples here. This one here, the one that's a little bit more full, I had a chance to smell it. I'm going to pour it into this SMB glass, uh, stock and barrel, that stands for. All right, so that's going in right now. And then this one over here is going into the blank glass that I have here. We'll smell and taste those in just a minute. I got your two poured right here. Awesome. Don't, don't I'll, send you, I'll send Daniel the message of what they are in a bit. I'm not going to send them right away. I'll wait till we've gone through the tasting a bit. Yeah. And I'll send them. I'm going to send, yeah. Okay, that's a good idea. I sent Daniel mine already, but I'm going to send it to Chris now as well, just so that two people have it, just in case. I haven't seen Daniel comment too much. Santa uh, Cruz, what's up, buddy? I, I sent your shirt yesterday. So you should be getting it in about 14 days since you're in California, maybe maybe next month. You might get it before Christmas. I don't know how the U.S. <laughs> Postal Service works. It's actually way better than ours, to be honest with you. They get it faster, and it's actually cheaper to send to them than it is to send within Canada, which is absolutely redonkulous. But, uh, I sent to you. You're in Toronto. It cost me 17 bucks to send yeah. it to like, like a four-hour trip. I was I not there. It doesn't make any sense. Ridiculous. I sent a Daniel. It cost $2 more. Yeah. Eric waits in that he picked up a Catena Malbec from Argentina today and opened it, had one glass. Um, I bought the same bottle, and him and I will be doing a wine and whiskey tasting, I guess, tomorrow on his channel, uh, tomorrow night after I teach kickboxing, which will be interesting. It'll hit me hard because whenever I – I, I try not to drink on my kickboxing nights because uh, the blood's flowing and then it, it, you get a little drunk a little too fast. So It happens. I, I worked all day, so I'm guessing that I'm going to be a little tipsy tonight as well. So Don't worry about it. It happens. Yeah, all good. <laughs> uh, simple diversions in the house. They just dropped a five. What's going on, brother? Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. I'm guessing that's Rob. I don't know if I've – spoken with Graham just yet. I think I speak with Rob mostly. Um, also, uh, George Kaplan's in the house. What's up, buddy? Skippy Van Pob. How's it going? I don't think I've seen you in the chat before. He's drinking Highland Park 12-year-old. Very nice. Um, and there was... I'll be doing a Highland Park, um, I'll be doing a Highland Park event on the 25th of March. So with Cam Miller, who will also be on your show, I think, in a week or so, right? He, uh, We haven't ironed out a date yet, but we do have a, um, a show planned. I just picked up this bad boy right here, and I don't want to drop it because it costs way too much, so I'm going to stand up and grab it. Uh, this one over here, 
It's the Highland Park Dark. Ooh, sexy. Yeah, it, it's really, really nice presentation. People are just telling us what they're drinking right now. Some people are drinking, or uh, Samuel's drinking the Kalila 18 Unpeated. Um, there's Ruslan from Russia. What's going on, buddy? Nice to see you. He's got his panel too, right, Ruslan? I think. Uh, I know there's a, there's a there's a new guy that's doing uh, whiskey reviews. He's from Russia. I forget his oh, name. Yeah, maybe it's him. I don't honestly. I, I haven't. I have had probably one of the most busy months of my life this month, which I guess is not a bad thing considering like YouTube views is at an all time low. I don't know if you're experiencing the same thing, but yeah, buddy, we were talking about that yesterday. Yeah. If anyone, if anyone um, that's in the chat right now and not subscribed to Swami, you guys can head over and do that right now. His channel is called Malted in Montreal. He's on YouTube as well. He does the same thing I'm doing on a regular basis, just reviewing good whiskey and trying to give you guys an honest opinion. So check him out. Thank you very much, Rob. Yeah, so that's this bad boy right here. A little bit of a fancy box. Ooh, but That's cute. Yeah, the, it's pretty... Uh, that's what my wife would say. I'm sorry, I just answered like how a woman would say it. That's cute. That's cute. <laughs> uh, I just lost a lot of street cut by doing that. <laughs> We're not judging. We're not judging. All right, let's get uh, let's get on with this uh, tasting. You want to go first? Yeah, I'm sending, I'm, by the way, I'm sending the answer to Chris as well on Facebook. So Chris, check your Facebook Messenger. I'm sending uh, you what it is that's uh, in Rob's uh, samples. Yeah, I did. Go this, ahead, Rob. I sent it to his uh, Facebook Messenger. So, all right. All right, you want you want to go first, or you want me to go first? Um, you go first. I'm like I said, I'm messaging Chris really quick, so go ahead. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the one that's a little more full here, and I think I mentioned I nosed this before, and when I was nosing it in the bottle, it kind of smelled like a, a rum, but now I'm not so sure. That I'm smelling it in the glass. Are you liking the nose? How are you feeling about it and stuff? So far, it's good. Yeah, I like it. Different. It's got. It. I do smell a bit of molasses, but I could be wrong. I'm not saying nothing. Yeah, no, you don't have to. Man, that's tough. So all of these were like washed out. There's no, there's no remnants of a rum or anything like that. <laughs> no, there's no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. So if, I, if I stirred it, my dick. <laughs> Dicky stirred it. <laughs> Mom's all afraid of it. Poison him. You guys turn down. You turn me down on your end, bro. I'm getting like a feedback or something. Okay, hold on one sec. Let me, let me see if I can adjust that. That might help. All right. Better? Yep. All right. Good job. So Daniel's saying that he needs his headphones. Or this, do I need headphones? Is he suggesting that I need them? I don't know if my mic is actually working. I have it on. Well, you sound fine on my end. Just give me a second. I'm not... Uh... You sound perfectly clear on my end. Okay, so this is either a rum or a whiskey aged in a rum barrel. Or I could be way off. But that's what I'm going to go with, and I'm sticking to it for now. Until yeah. I taste it. But then, mm -hmm. but then I get this weird, like, barbecue note on the end, which makes me think it could be like a spring bank or something stupid like that. Which makes no sense. This is like all over the place. I can tell you it's one of my favorite drink drinks. That's all I'll say. Yeah, feels like. And that's crazy. You tried it. I sent it to you, and now you want to trade me a bottle for it. All right. 
Yeah, that back end is really making me suspicious. And it's le way less like a run now. That's so weird. That does not make any sense to me. Got a nice complex nose, eh? <laughs> it's crazy. All right, I'm going to give it a taste. Go up. What the heck is that? <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Man. I feel like it's like a blend of like Coca-Cola and whiskey or something. I don't know. I can't I have no idea. You like it? Good. I think it's rum. It's got to be rum. But like some type of rum that I've never tasted before, like from an island that I've never tasted. Like I've only tasted Cuban, Jamaican, Dominican rums. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if this could be something maybe higher ABV. A rum that's a higher ABV. I'm gonna I'm gonna say there's a rum. Am I am I wrong about that? Uh, do I tell you? Uh, it, I can. Oh, fine. It's a rum. Okay. Thank it's God. Because if yeah. it wasn't a rum, then I would look really stupid. <laughs> it's a rum. All right. Cool. Yeah. I'm gonna say. It's higher than forty percent for sure. Hell yeah. Uh, but tasty, really, really tasty. Um, it almost drinks like it almost drinks like a whiskey because it's got a higher ABV. It's got a nice little kick to it. <clears throat> and then it's lighter on the back end when it comes to like traditional rums that I've tasted. I don't, I don't get a ton of molasses, so it's, it doesn't like speak to me like it's a rum style molasses or it, molasses. Is, a sugar cane. it is a sugar cane based rum wow i'm impressing myself actually <laughs> that's yeah. pretty interesting um okay i'm gonna say it's some sort of plantations like one of the different ones that i've never tasted before it's a plantation rum 12 year old reunion at 51.9 percent abv is this the this is the swami raised the roof for the intro yeah, yeah, there you go good job very impressed. Not bad. All right. I'm. I'm. I'm actually really. Ha what was the ABV on that? Sorry. Fifty-one point nine percent. Wow. It does not drink like fifty-one percent. It's a. It's my favorite rum. It is my favorite rum out there. Like there's like, I, I have all the plantations out of all the plantations. My favorite. You know, I have all the El Dorados. You know, I've got a pretty expansive rum collection. I've got about forty-five different rums. Yeah. This is by far my favorite rum. Uh, which. This wh is, where is it from? That one. This one's Reunion. I think it's from, um, one second. It's, I think it's a French island rum. It's 10 years in Cognac uh, Cass, and then one year in uh, Pierre Fernand Cass. I'm sure Eric White would know what that is. Pierre Fernand Cass. That's, that's also a wine a type of Cognac, Pierre Fernand. Mm -hmm. And then it's also further matured in a rye whiskey cast for one year. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's where you get that whiskey bit wow, from there, too. Cool. So. I actually, you know what, man? That actually makes me feel really good about myself. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, it's got all the all the notes that you're noticing, like whiskey, rum, this, and it's plus it's cane. So you got your cognac in there, everything. Very fruity. So Gold Habs is saying, stop looking at the comments, cheater, to me. But did you post it in the chat? No. So what's he talking about? I don't know. Maybe a head Posted it ahead in the chat somewhere. I didn't see it. I swear. I didn't. Crazy post? I'm sure Crazy didn't post it. Maybe. He wouldn't have done that. Honestly, I can't. Well, I'm I'm not even really long. Long. All right. So I'm going to go next, and then you can do my other one after, right? Yeah. yeah you I'm, I'm sure I'm going to fail this, but I'm going to try it. Yeah, I'm going to do the non peated Well, you have to start with the non peated anyways. The nose is extremely delicate. 
It's got some nice fruit to it. I'm not getting like crazy sherry. I am getting some sherry, but it's like on the back end, very light. It's not like really in my face with like red fruit. So I'm getting some dried dates, but not really crazy red fruit. Then again, I'm not the biggest master when it comes to sherry. I'm more of a peat guy, so I'm just... But I can tell it's not a Glendronic right off the bat, so I'm pretty sure I was like, where are you just going to send me Glendronic or McCallum? But this is definitely not McCallum. This is definitely not Glendronic. Yeah. It's a lighter peat. I mean, there's no peat. There's no uh, heavy sherry influence. I am getting reminiscent, and I'm just going to state this, because I, I did a series of their bottles, but it was about five months back. And I kind of get a reminiscent of what I think it is, but I don't think I've had this one, but I'm guessing it's from this distillery. Okay, and I'm just gonna state it and let me know if I'm right if it's from this distillery. I'm guessing it's a ball blair. You're close, but it's it's not about not ball blair. You're, you're on the right track as far as like flavor profile and all those different types of things. Like it would be a lighter, yeah, you're on the right track. Yeah, I'm gonna taste it. Judging by the mouthfeel, it's definitely over 45% ABV. I'm guessing 46. Uh, do you want me to tell you? Yeah. It's just under. Just under. 45%. Right. No, no, it's it's just under 45, sorry. So 43? Yeah. Okay. Well, I knew it wasn't over 46, but I thought 46. Around there. Yeah. Because the nose is really delicate, so I can just stick it in there. So I knew it wasn't cast right off of that. This one can be tricky, honestly. It, it's um, well, I'll let you. I'll let, I, I know why. I think I know why it can be tricky, for sure. I'll, I'll explain to you why I think after. Okay, so it's not Ball Blair, but it's in the same kind of wheelhouse of light peat. It's not an old Paltney, that's for sure. I'm not getting old Paltney here. There's no marine kind of quality to it. No saline. Mm. Make a lot of apple kind of notes. There's definitely some bourbon casking in here. Some vanilla. It's slightly sweet, but it's not overly sweet. It's nice. It's nice, so it treats really nicely. Like I said, it's definitely not McCallum, that's for sure. It's definitely not Glendronic. So. Old Pulteney's out because I don't get the saline and I don't get like that reed flavor. Good, yeah. No, you're doing really. Like, pardon? You're doing well on like like what you're eliminating for sure. Yeah, man. God, this is tough. I was pretty sure it was Ball Blair. I was like what, almost. What age was, bracket would you put it in? Like, how old would you say roughly it is? I wouldn't say it's that old. I would say between 12 and 15, max. Okay. Interesting. It's not Ben Riek, is it? It's not a Ben Riek. It's a space side? It's a Highland. It's a Highland. Scott's teasing you in the chat. He, he's making. He wants me. Is this a Glenfiddich? It's not a Glenfiddich. Right. You you want me to tell you? Yeah, tell me. I'm I'm stumped. It's uh Glen Goyne, twenty one year old. Glen, I haven't tried any Glen Goynes other than like the twelve, and it was a long time ago. This is a twenty one. Yeah, that's a twenty one. So right. honestly, I I love it. It's actually, as far as I know, and I could be wrong, but. I think it's 100% um, sherry casks. Mm -hmm. I think they stopped the ex bourbon maturation blend. I uh, failed. Uh, <laughs> well, honestly, you didn't fail because I honestly think that Glen Goyne and and Bal Blair do have similar characteristics, especially mm -hmm. when they're they're sherry uh, Bal Blairs, right? So mm -hmm. that's why I thought I was actually pretty impressed. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, it's it's really nice. Uh, thank you, though, because I think I've told you I've only tried the 12-year-old from Glen Goyne. I've 
I live in Quebec. We hardly get any Glengoyers. We recently got the 18-year-old that just came into the sack now, so I can go grab that. That's honestly, it's one of my favorite, like, I think it's pretty reasonably priced. We don't get it as cheap as you can get it in some other places, but I think it's excellent stuff, the 18-year-old. That's like an awesome everyday draft. I found that the, the 21 is pretty oaky, so I thought that would kind of give away the age. I was trying to, like, look for something that would help, mm -hmm. like, kind of, like. It does have, it does have a, like, a nice tobacco note on the back and on the palate. It just, I'm nervous or something. I didn't really yeah, get the no, note. Honestly, it's not yeah. easy, man. It's, honestly, this yeah. is not an easy thing. It's not. I'm, like, sweating right now, dude. This is the first time. But, well, I did it once. I did it with uh, Mike That's Crazy on my channel when he came on live, and I got, I got it right. Mm -hmm. um, we did the lot 40 cast strength versus my few ride to see because I kept on telling him I think the few ride is better, but I like the lot 40 cast strength and I did the test and I picked out my few ride. So, and Mike was pissed, <laughs> but uh, okay. but yeah, oh, Mike by the way also gave me a sample of Glenn 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 Glenn. Mike, Mike guessed mine and he guessed that it was Glenn going 21 year old in the chat. I have no idea how he did that. Same with uh, Peter White, they both. Right, should I? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going to uh, shut. I'm, I'm going to switch pages so I don't see any answers in the chat. Yeah, please. I'm gonna do the same thing for this next yeah. one, um, so right. that I don't see what's going on. Uh, because I'm really, I'm really excited about this. All, All right, so I'm gonna go on to this peated one. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I'm gonna pour myself a touch more because otherwise, just pour it all out. Just do it. Okay, so definitely peated, and it's more reminiscent of. Oh man, that's tough. Tell me how that nose is. I want to hear what you think. Barbecue. Um. Ashy, but like, like charcoal ash, like nice ash. I wasn't getting as much uh, barbecue as I am now. And this is the problem is once I start to smell that, I start to think uh, spring bank right away. The color kind of tells me it could be spring bank as well. Because Isla peated whiskeys tend to be a little bit lighter in color, for the most part, unless they're played with. Mm -hmm. Man. So now, I can tell, I'll, I'll tell you right now, it's 100% natural color. Okay, cool. It could be a long grow. Could be a spring bank. I'm not sure which it is between the two. And it just it why why I think that is because it has that like typical must that a spring bank would have or like a, a long grow would have like that comes from that distillery in particular. Mm -hmm. Am I right to say that this is not an Isla peated whiskey? You're wrong. It is an Isla peated whiskey. Yeah, you're wrong. Wow. Wow. All right. That that changes things for sure. So this is definitely something I haven't tried before. What do you find? Like, how are you finding it? Is it nice? Yeah, no, the nose I really like, and I'm surprised because when I when I first smelled it, I'm like, man, that smells like iodine a bit and like those types of smells. But then pouring it in the glass, I'm not getting any of that anymore. I'm not getting like that like burnt rubber. I'm not getting that medicinal note. There's like a hint of like um like a saltiness, like a Sodium. If you, want to, if you want to drop a little water in there just to maybe open it up a bit, you go ahead. Well, I'm going to give it a taste first and then I'll. Yeah. OK. 
Okay, so that's a little bit more Isla style. What do you think the, the how's how's the strength to you? What do you think it is uh, the ABB? I it's definitely fifty or above. Mm hmm I you, think yeah, it, I'll give you the Takai strength. Okay. Yeah. Um tastes a little bit like a Lafroy to me, but I could be wrong about that. Um <clears throat> You picking up anything else other than Pete? Try another sip. Like, I do feel like there's some... Maybe some wine cask influence. I don't know. I'm not too familiar with Lefroy, and I'm not too familiar with Ardbeg special releases. So I'm... Okay. But I'm going to... Um, what the age category you would give it at? So that's tough. That, that, that tricks me because... Because it doesn't burn, but you could tell it's higher ABV by the by the flavor and the mouthfeel. Yeah, and it does have like that ashy, like tobacco kind of like cigarette smoke on the back end. Mm -hmm. I haven't had any um, older Kalila. Heated whiskeys. I'm gonna go look at the comments just for fun. This is not my guess, anyways. It's your guess. Yeah. That's tough. It could be older. I wouldn't put it past 18 years old. Um. If so my guesses are somewhere in the range and they're pretty much all over the place, but I do feel that there could be some wine cask influence in this. You're correct. There is some wine casking. Now try and guess what kind of wine. That's tough. It's a little darker. Mm -hmm. So, and you said it's a hundred percent natural color. Yeah. So I wouldn't say that it's Madeira, and I wouldn't say that it's um, like a French wine. You're, you're correct. It's not a French wine, and it's not an Italian wine. Yeah. It, it's – it could be port, and it could be sherry, but I'm going to – if I'm – Doesn't need a drop of water. It's so smooth. You like it, eh? Yeah, it's good. It's really good. Good. Happy. Um, hmm. I'm going to say it's either a special release art bag. Or something like a special release Lefroy, uh, Karchis, like uh, some sort of port or something of that sort. I don't know. What is it? It is my whiskey of the year 2017, Kilhoman PX single cast, cast strength whiskey, five years of age. Oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> so that's what it is. That's good. I started seven years. It's seven years of age. I that's, that's a good, honestly, that was a great one to send me because I. Never tasted a kill almond, so I, I would never have. I, that's why I knew I wanted to send it to you, and that's why I kept telling you it's a special. That's it. That's that's all I have left. That's gone. Really? I nothing. I, I send it to you because I love you. So there you go. Enjoy. <laughs> I really appreciate it. No problem. No problem. You did great though. You did great because you were saying Springbank, and uh, as Keith knows, Springbank and Kill Home have a lot of similarities in their profiles for some reason. Really? Uh, See? They're both, yeah, well, they're both independent distilleries, and they both uh, vary every single time they produce because they're both annual, and uh, it changes up and everything like that. So they're they're kind of they're they're my two favorite distilleries, as you know. Interesting. Well, I'm I feel pretty good about it. I, I mean, I was in I was wrong I was wrong in the sense that I, I was leaning more towards like the Springbank side, and then when you said that it's an Isla, but like it's weird because as soon as I opened it, I'm like. Oh, that smells like Isla Pete. And then 
I poured it in the glass and it no longer smelled that way. And I got way more barbecue notes and way more like of that must that I'm Peter Peter White nailed it, by the way. What's that? Peter White knew it was it was it because I guess he guessed because he saw me smiling, he saw how happy I was that he liked it. <laughs> I always talk about that whiskey, so I guess he kind of figured that's what I sent you. Because yeah. I never talk up about McKill home. Peter White, I think, nailed all of them. He he told he said Glen Goyne 21 as well. But would you agree that that is a whiskey that should be picked up? Oh, absolutely. I would definitely pick this up. I definitely am going to pick this up and review it now that I've tasted it. If I can, I don't know if it still exists, to be honest with you. I don't know. It's still out there a little bit, but it's uh, very, very hard to find now. But it's going to be an annual release from Kill Home, and so it might come back next year. You don't need to add a drop of water to that. This Saturday, I'm going to be doing a review with Judy Yang, you know, my friend at uh, Umkipal um, Whiskey. He's been on my channel a couple of times. We're going to be doing the Kill Homan 100% Isla Sherry Edition, the one that was a mistake. That okay. they matured 100% Isla into Sherry uh, barrels. That one sold out. You can't buy it, but we're going to do it anyways for fun. So he's got a ball of it. Very nice. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to move on to your peated. I'm going to not look at the comments like you did. <laughs> Tash. All right. Uh, what's up, Tash? Um, I haven't been following along with the chat. John Belushi in the house. Uh, Fun Johnny's in the house. What's going on, guys? Cheers, everyone that's there. Please subscribe to Malta to Montreal. I'm nearing 1,000 subscribers, and I'd like to hit it someday in my life. <laughs> I've worked really hard. You're gonna hit it very, very, very soon. All right. Um, love the color. It's gorgeous. I'm hoping this is natural color. Can you give me that? 100% natural color. Wow, that is beautiful color then, because that is some amber as F. I'm not going to use the word. <laughs> that is just gorgeous. It's like bronzy amber, and it's a peated. So, oh, wow. ABV definitely above 48%. Am I right? Yep. Okay. Tell that right off the bat. Cast rank? Yep. Mmm. Like barbecue chips like you were talking about. Mm. Almost like ketchup barbecue chips. Like just like a mix. It's nice. Mmm. Very dry peat. Oh god, that's gorgeous. I'm getting a tiny, like the smallest hint of iodine, so it's so not off-putting because it's like really far in the background that I can hardly get it. It's making me think it's inland peat, but I have a feeling it's an Isla, even though it totally smells like an inland peat. Is it inland peat? It's an Isla. Oh, okay. we were both wrong. Right. But it smells <laughs> like inland. Yeah, it's dry. We, we both picked two Islas that smell like Inland peat. Inland, yeah. That's dry. Well, I, I just, it's confusing because there's a little iodine in there. So I wanted to say Isla, but it's so far in the back. Yeah, that's pretty much how I mm -hmm. felt as well. Yeah. Because normally when you're getting the, like, Lafroigs and the Lagavulins, you can get that medicinal right off the bat. But yeah. That's, not, that's what's fun about blinds. It's like, the, um, so far, there's some cherry maturation to this, right? There isn't. There is not. There's, oh, man. Right. And, and it's crazy because of the color, right? Yeah. Well, I was, I was figuring, and I can kind of get some fruits in the background. Yeah, so mm. a few people are guessing in the chat, and actually I can honestly say that they're all wrong so far. I'm getting a lot of vanilla. A lot of vanilla. So it's a bourbon, it's a bourbon casking? Yeah, there's definitely some bourbon casking in there for sure. So there's a mix. It's first fill? Um, I believe it's first fill bourbon, yes. Okay. Okay. Octomore? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and the um the the, what gives it that color is it's mm. the virgin oak. So it's mm. an Octomore virgin oak. So there you go. Woo! Got one. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful, man. That is gorgeous. 
Yeah, no, it's crazy stuff, man. I honestly love it. Everybody I've allowed, I've allowed people that don't even drink whiskey to try that and they they fall in love. Mm. Okay, that's crazy. Actually, I think he has it. We're going to be doing the reviews of uh, all the Octomores he has. It's on my channel. I've only done the 7.1. That's the only bottle of Octomore I ever bought. Yeah. Um, they're not the cheapest bottles to get. I, I don't I don't have an, an English high school teacher's salary, so I can't be getting Octomores on a regular basis like some people. <laughs> yeah, I love you. I've been just lucky missing. to get them for good deals, so. Uh, no, I, hey, dude. If anyone deserves it, I always said it's the teachers. And I, I like, you know, you guys deserve good salaries. I, I don't understand why people would even think that you guys don't deserve the salaries. Like, because you guys were getting, like, you have to get tenured to actually get paid well as a teacher, don't you? Uh, yeah. So to, to be max paid as a teacher, you have to work for 10 years. Uh, yeah. So to, to me, you guys deserve it. You're, you're teaching the future. Congrats and uh, thanks. I'm gonna stick around with you. Uh, we've done the tasting. You want to keep going or? Yeah, we'll go, we'll keep going. Um, let's uh, let's turn it over a little bit to the chat and see what everybody's saying. Yeah. But there's some people that deserve some some credit because they were pretty accurate with their guesses and and such. I didn't. If anybody did guess the Octomore Virgin Oak 7.4, I apologize. I didn't see. Um, I didn't see it while you guys were doing it. I was trying I to just got like the second the second you said it was Isla Octomore came to mind because of the, the the peat intensity, but it was nice and rounded. And Octomore really knows how to. I don't know how they do it. They they do these insanely high peats, but they don't like rip everything else out there. Like I got the fruits in there, I got the vanilla, I got the nose, yeah. and that's how I knew it's Octomore because it's not taking over, but it's good and strong the peat at the same time. And I don't know. How, this is not a Jim McEwen, though. Jim McEwen retired before these came out. So I don't know who the master distiller is now. I'm not sure if he retired before the sevens. Was it the eights that he retired for? I think it was the eights that he retired for. I'm not sure. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I'm not I'm not 100. I don't call me on that. Uh, Daniel's asking if I've tried the 8.3. I have tried it, but I would like to own a bottle because I don't like to judge just based on one sample of something. I don't feel like, feel like that's fair. Uh, I did find that I like the 6.3 better so far. I so far I like the 6.3 the best out of all of them. Which is so, yeah, that's crazy saying he only has the eight. So we'll be reviewing the eight next time. That's crazy. He's gonna be uh, doing a couple of shows with me. He's a good kid. I like him a lot. Mike's yeah, he's, really, well, he's older than me, but he just looks younger than me. So I call him kid. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> so is he half Italian, half Asian? Is that what's going on? Yeah. There? He's half well, he, he's the one that made the joke, so it's not racist if I say it, because he already said it. He, he was like, uh, what was the, he, that's crazy, right in the comments, you, you said you're uh, Jap, uh, Jappuccino or something like that, he called himself. <laughs> <laughs> Jappuccino. <laughs> well, I'm half Italian, half Rusky, so whatever. Right on. You're the only full-blooded Italian that we know. <laughs> <laughs> You know what's funny, man? Uh, I always say that rum reminds me of like flat Coca-Cola. And what did I say while I was tasting it blind? It's so weird. But I'm glad you liked it. No, because it's like honestly my favorite rum, and I'm really happy you like the Kill Omen. I was like, because I wanted your first experience with Kill Omen to be good. I was going to send you a lot Gorm, but I was like, eh. Bart and uh, Scott hated it so much, and I didn't want to give uh, like you that. And you're like, ew, I don't like it. So I was like, I'll send him the last of my stuff, even though I love it. And I was like, you know, <laughs> he's gonna send me something crazy, so I gotta send him something good. Well, I, I hope you liked what I sent you. I don't know. I, oh, I love it. I love it. I'm gonna I'm gonna be enjoying. I still got quite a bit left of the uh, Octomore, a half of it. Well, I'll drink some more with you. And I, I do like the Glen Goyne. Uh, that's crazy. He gave me a sampling of the cast strength version of it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be trying that soon. I haven't tried it yet, but uh, I'm gonna I gotta start getting to the Glen Gwynes. Everyone's always telling me to. It's just there's so much out there to buy, and I'm like I keep on picking up other things, and I'm like yeah. I, I honestly I, I literally have to. I just recently like bought those Highland Parks that I showed you, and yeah, and I bought this, and this is. Oh. You went for the you went for the Ben Rex, nice. I did. It's uh the Moscato or Moscatel uh finish, twenty two year old. So I remember you used to do a lot of Ben Rex when you first started your channel, but then you haven't done one in a long time. Yeah, honestly I haven't done one since the first year. I just wanna quickly um Jason Fisk, thank you so much, buddy. Really appreciate the super chat. 
Um, you guys are awesome, man. You guys, they, they seem to like when we do these blinds and I, I love doing them. I don't know about you, but I got nominated by Scotty for the next uh, Aquavite one and I'm pretty pumped because I love doing these things. I'm actually going to be doing, um, well, it's not for sure yet, but they've, they've approached me with the possibility uh, this company is going to allow me to do a commercial of sorts where I'm tasting a whiskey blind and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be told what the whiskey is. I'm not going to be told um, what the brand is or anything like that. Uh, they represent a bunch of brands. So um, they want me to come into a room and taste the whiskey blind, uh, tell the camera what I think of it and then guess what it is. And then they're going to have two just uh, like everyday whiskey drinkers come do the exact same thing. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty stoked about it because I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Dude, uh, I'm so proud of you. Like you, you've grown, like I, I said it, like at the beginning, me and we used to kind of have debates all the time. It's all right. You know? Yeah. But like he's grown like so much since I, I've known now it's going on three years. It's coming close to now. And uh, yeah. you, you've changed so much and you, you can tell your pelts developed so much because before it was just Sherry, Sherry, Sherry McGowan's. And we used to debate all the time because I hate McCall. <laughs> so we used to get dirtier. But it's like now you're going like all over the place and you, you can tell your pals develop like crazy now. And you know, you deserve everything you're getting, man. And I'm very happy for you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. No worries. Scotty, I mean, thank not, you. I'm not even drunk yet and I'm saying this. So. <laughs> I know you're only two drinks in. Yeah. <laughs> Scotty, thank you so much for the super chat, brother. Really appreciate it. Um Guys, I already know that if you're watching me, you probably are already subscribed to the Scotch Test Dummies. But if there's anyone by fluke that is not, go and do so. While you're at it, do the same thing for this guy uh, on the other end of the chat with me, uh, Swami from Malta to Montreal. Go to his channel, subscribe. Let's get him to 1,000 before the next month. Let's say before June hits. Let's try to get him to 1,000. That would be great. And uh, just showing you guys for the Route 66 trip, I went and picked this up. I'll be doing some live shows on the road. I picked this up just so I could do live shows and stuff. I got the GoPro camera, the 4K. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I got the motorcycle. It's going to be uh, on there. So when I go through the Grand Canyon, you guys will be following me through the Grand Canyon. When I go through St. Louis, Missouri, you'll be following me through St. Louis, Missouri. When I go through Texas, you'll be there with me in Texas. When I go everywhere from California, Santa Monica, you'll be there with me the entire ride through Route 66 for 21 days. And I'll be at different bars, different locations, drinking it up. Uh, I'm leaving July 19th, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, as I said, I got uh, – oh, this Saturday I got a live show. It's going to be a Nika event. Um, it's just a friend's event, so we're going to be drinking some Nika. On the 25th, I got a Highland Park event with Cam Miller. As I say, there's going to be the Magnus, the 12-year-old, the uh, Dark Origins, the Full Volume, the 21, and the 25-year-old Highland Park. So those are going to be all there for that event. So I hope you guys join me for that live tasting. And then uh, afterwards, I'll be doing an interview with Cam Miller, like the last time will be the second time on the show, and we'll be discussing the Full Volume. And, uh, yeah, so that's just coming up on my channel. Other than that, it's going to be tons more reviews. Uh, next week, I got you're going to be on a show tomorrow. I got Eric Waite coming on next week, and we're going to be doing the live show, uh, reviewing the fusion together because Eric Waite just bought a bottle. Do that with me. Oh, nice! Honestly, fusion's awesome stuff. I love it. Yeah. Um, do you have time for one more drink or? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm uh, I'm let these guys choose my next drink. Uh, it could be anything on this table, and if it's open or unopened, I will I will unbox if I have to. Um, you guys get to choose. So. Basically, the whiskey with the most votes wins. Whatever you guys like me to drink next. Um, also, guys, uh, Swami has a whole bunch of shirts. So if you haven't already picked one up, you guys can pick one up. I'm sure uh, he's he sold out almost of his first batch, but he will be getting more in and, and sending those out very shortly. I have a few more hats left. There's a couple up here. This one right here. And I'm wearing today the Scotch Test Dummies hat, but, you know. Um, so we got the Dark Grooves has four. McCallan M I don't have. Sorry, Tom. Maybe if you would like to buy me a bottle, Tom, feel free. But, uh, <laughs> uh, HP 17. It looks like Grooves is winning tonight, guys. I guess I'm drinking Grooves next. All right, cool. 
So, got this committee release, Grooves. Claire the Third picked it up for me, um, sent it to my my source in Ohio, and then my friend went to the um, – sorry, guys, I, I already decided to do the Grooves. There's way too many Grooves up there, so <laughs> – that's crazy. Ben, stuff. Like, ben React 21, 22, they're saying. Uh, everyone's going Ben React now. They just want you to open all your bottles. Just do a, what, what do you call it there, when uh, you mix different sodas together, do a, do like a slurry. Like you do when you're a kid at a wedding, you just mix a whole bunch of different drinks. <laughs> Have fun. Make yourself a blend. Get the drunkest uncle to actually take a sip. Yeah, just put it put it in the juice glass, though. You can't even put it in the Glencar when we do that. All right, so I opened the, the grooves. Let's see how this bad boy is. I have I, I've never tasted a hard bag video release yet, believe it or not. I did. I, I got a, um I got to taste the Supernova committee release, which was it was pretty good and crazy. What came to my house? He tried to. It was all right. I don't know why it's worth a thousand dollars. I'll just be honest. That thing was not a thousand dollar whiskey to me. Gregor is just joining in. What's up, buddy? Nice to see you. Uh, I just opened the Ardbeg Grooves. Uh, the Grooves got a very mediocre review from Surge recently. Um, Surge baffles me because he'll give something like decent, a 90, and then he'll give something that most people rave about, like a 78. So I, 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 I'm not knocking him. The guy's tasted more whiskeys than I'll ever taste in my life. I think he's awesome. I use him as a source all the time for – purchasing my own whiskey but I just I don't take everything he says to heart that's all which you shouldn't with any of us for that matter don't do that with me don't do that with anybody because you need to try it for yourself to know for sure um, mm, this this Octomore is really opening up bro it's really nice um, I'm, I'm, I'm not drinking McAllen's my friend I'm, I'm finishing up this beautiful beautiful Octomore that Rob uh, that I poured because I poured a nice full ounce of it and I still got uh, the uh, what was the other one there I forget what was it. you forgot about it because the Octomore is so good it's the Glen, right. Glen Goyne 21 the Glen, the Glen Goyne 21 yeah so I still got two drinks uh, going plus I got my beer so <laughs> I'm okay I'm drinks. Daniel said that he's my source he's my Alberta <laughs> source. um I just when you held that up to the camera, it's crazy how dark that is at natural color. I don't know if this committee releases natural color. I don't. Uh, know. It's our bag. I doubt it's natural. There's nothing natural about our bag. It's not that. I, I love our bag. Don't get me wrong. I, I shit on them a lot. I do like them. I just think that they are so overpriced. Like other the art bag ten to me is just wonderful, and it's at a decent price. You know what I mean? Yeah, and like everything afterwards is good, but it's like astronomically more expensive than the ten-year-old when it's just a slight bit better than the ten-year-old. So yeah, that's where that's where I get annoyed. Yeah, they're probably that's not much fun. older either. They're probably like a a year or two older. Yeah. Um, there's not a lot of heat on this, on the grooves. Like this, this if I had to smell this for the first time, this would have stumped me too. Hmm. Uh, Jason Fisk, my, uh, I, I did a review on the Ugadale. You can go check it out. It's been about a year since I did it. Uh, I did. I used to be a big fan of the Ugadale back in about 2013 till about 2015. And then I started noticing that the sherry influence disappeared quite a bit off of the newer bottles. So I still like the Ugadale. It's just nowhere near what it was once. So I'm not purchasing it anymore. That's all. Yeah, I honestly, I, that's one of the art bags that I actually had an opportunity to review, and it wasn't, it wasn't my favorite. I like the ten a lot better than the Ugadot, to be honest. With you. Mm -hmm. I just buy the ten. It's it's a uh, it's, uh, sixty five dollars cheaper in Canada for the ten year old, so I just pick it up instead of the Ugadot because I don't find much of a difference. Yeah, I know in the states you get the Ugadot for around seventy five dollars, so it makes sense when the art bag ten is. 55 and the Udell's maybe $15 more, so it's not that big of a difference. Or for us, it's a big difference of like 65 to 70 bucks, so I'd rather just get the 10. Jeremy from that's uh, from Toronto Whiskey Society is saying that the uh, Corey is better than the Oogie. Um, I, yeah, I think I agree with him to be honest with you. I still have to review the Corey, but 
The worst one of them was the perpetuum for me. I hated that bottle. I thought that was so bad. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. I haven't heard many people like it, so I, I heard kind of great things about the Dark Cove, but I've never tasted that one. I loved it. I've had the Dark Cove, loved it. it. Just it's 180 bucks, so it's not something that I buy. It's more something I drink when I go to a bar. I purchased it a lot when I'm at a bar. Um, 180 dollars to me. I, I, I once I, I've always said for you it's different. For me, once. This is just my opinion. Again, this doesn't insult anybody, but Rob knows me very well. Over 150 bucks, I need an age statement. I, I, I just do. It, it's just the way it goes. Even if it's five years old, I just want to know what it is. I need to yeah. know what's in the bottle. I actually said something in a video I recorded today, very similar to that. I want to know, like, I would love to know if something's three years old and they're charging 300 bucks for it. I don't care. I don't care that they're charging 300 bucks for it. If it's if it's high quality stuff, it's high quality stuff. Age, and I'm doing a video very shortly on does age matter and i've been like accumulating some research and stuff like that based on my own opinion mainly um i'm gonna give uh, i'm gonna talk in that video but um yeah i'd, I'd love to have an age statement on something even if it's only three years old when i i 100 agree and like like uh, john glazer when it comes to compass box and even uh Anthony Wills from Kill Omen, if you go on their sites, you can check what's in the bottle, so they'll tell you exactly what percentage of what's in there. So if there is older stuff in there, you can know. So it might be three-year-old, but it might be 80% 10 to 12-year-old in there as well with it. So yeah, you're getting like maybe, you know, it doesn't matter if it says three-year-old in the bottle, as long as you know and that you're getting, what, 70% 23-year-old in there with it. So it accounts yeah. for the prey. Exactly. Good. Well, you know, and at the end of the day, I... I'll still drink a, a no age statement that's very expensive. Like if someone offered me some Macallan M, I'd be like, yeah, I'm definitely going to drink it. And if I love it and I could afford the bottle, I probably would buy it too. But um, it's just, it makes it a little bit easier pulling the trigger when you know what you're getting into, I guess. I agree. I agree. And I think that people should always buy at whatever rate they're comfortable buying. I know my rate, uh, me and Mike were discussing it on my live show. My rate is uh, $200 in my comfort, my comfort, my comfort zone. Yep. Going over 200, I really have to really, really love something if I'm going over $200. I, even if you could afford it, it's just to me, I start thinking about what I can buy with that money other than that bottle. And I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, so. That's what when you're once your brain is questioning, that's where you know your comfort zone is. So. <laughs> Jeremy is saying that no age statements are better than age statements. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's just trying like, to start a debate. He's starting scraps over here. You know what? Honestly, it's it's like there's a lot of excellent no age statement whiskeys. I yeah. I love a lot of them, but I don't know. It, it, like age for me, there I've had a lot of twelve year old whiskeys that are a way way better than 25 year old whiskey so um age doesn't mean anything in my opinion but it's all about how it's made you're paying for quality i don't mind paying a lot of money for a 12 year old if it's one of the best 12 year olds you're ever going to taste you know? oh, um, i how much did i rave about glendronic batch number four like I, and batch number five i wouldn't stop talking about how much i love batch number five i thought batch number five was one of the best whiskeys i ever had and, I, and you see me i did every single glendronic pretty much out there other than you know the special releases that you got lucky bastard um but like i've done like about nine glendronics on my channel and the number five is still my favorite glendronic i've ever tried so yeah the batch five is just beautiful yeah it is and um just in general glendronic even if uh, I just did a review on the heated port, which will probably come out next Monday. Um, and that's good stuff too. And it's a noise statement. I, I'm curious to know how old it is, but they, and it's funny cause I do the eight year old on Friday and I kind of compare them in Mark. It's, it's, I, well. Oh, you sorry. haven't done the, you haven't done the eight year old yet? The, uh, Friday will be the release of that. I have never done it before that. No. Is it okay if I say something though, or should I not talk because you're going to review it? No, oh, it doesn't matter. I've already reviewed it. I've already reviewed it. Uh, I, oh, because I reviewed it and um, I liked it, but the only problem is the, the price range because the 12 year olds out there, which is a much better product, I find. Yeah. And also, it just reminds me of a Ben Riak. It doesn't remind me of a Glendronic. It's yeah. a good product, well, but I just. Ex, it's because of the ex bourbon. You're not used to that with her, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. I, it doesn't feel like I'm drinking a. It's like when I drank the Glendronic Peated. It just didn't feel like I was drinking a Glendronic. It's like I felt like I was drinking a Glen, 
uh, uh, Ben Rea. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to give this a shot. This is, it's, I wouldn't say it's a typical Isla type nose either. It's got a lot of those barbecue notes that we were talking about earlier. There is some Isla hints in there, like some iodine and that sort of stuff. And a little bit of rubber maybe, but not much. Mostly on the barbecue side. I'm going to give it a taste. I, I didn't add any water. It's 51.6%. Yeah. While she while she's taking off, I just want to say goodnight to Welsh Doro, one of my favorite. He was my third subscriber I ever had on my channel. I love Welsh, and you have yourself a good night, buddy. Take care, Welsh. Thanks for dropping in, buddy. So Scotty's saying that I'm getting some good bottles. That that's basically the last of my purchasing for the next little while. I have one Cavalon on the way, and then. And then, uh, such a liar. You're, you're the worst liar ever. I, I'm this telling guy, you, this guy's I'm, already ordered five bottles while we were talking. <laughs> I'm putting myself in detention. <laughs> Honestly, I can't. I, I got to relax a little bit, especially now that Snups is out of the picture. I got to I gotta uh, relax a little bit. So, so can I, I bad now, Snups? Now we, it's part of your contract that you're never allowed to say anything bad about. Well, you can't. I can I, I honestly, I'm not, I have nothing bad to say about them. They were good. They're good to me. They were. It's a good app. I'm gonna continue to use it. Um, and I do have all, a video that I have to post of them, uh, like to talk about that. Oh, thanks. How could you let this Bambino go? Look at him. Look, do, do a sad face. <laughs> <laughs> not. Come on, Snups. You cheap bastards. Give this man some money. <laughs> um. Rob is back to buying Devil's Cut. <laughs> hey, if you want to taste pencil shavings mixed with turpentine, go get yourself a bottle of Devil's Cut. It's, it's <laughs> wonderful. Uh, if you want to laugh, go check out my Devil's Cut review. Scott Scott, uh, Scott loved my Devil's Cut review. I, I, I never got so much love. I couldn't get through that review without like laughing my ass. I was so... It's, it was so bad, it just made me giggle the entire review, like how bad it was. Like, Normally you bet like a uh, face, like I was just laughing. I was like, is this what am I drinking? I, I haven't like, reviewed oh. the Devil's Cup, but I haven't I haven't heard a bad thing about it other than other than you. I know you're not oh. a fan, so that, that, but, that's my top. I gotta say thank you to Eric. Wait, thank you so much, buddy. This guy honestly, Eric's such a classy dude and he always supports the channel. He's always uh, looking for interesting ways to present his own channel. Um, mm -hmm. and I, I'm really excited to be on his channel tomorrow, so that'll be a lot of he, fun. I, I met Eric Wade about uh, it's going on three years. He was the first larger channel that like really liked me and took an interest in me and started following me a lot. And he was commenting on every video I ever made. And I started watching his channel, and it now he's become really entertaining. But like, I started watching because like he he would educate me. I felt like I was like in class every time I'd watch Eric Wait, Like I was like, wow, man, I'm learning so much from this guy. Like he's everyone really was always talking about Ralphie, but I was like, what comes out of Eric Waite's mouth is just pure knowledge. Even though he has like funny little rhetorics, he's goofy and stuff. It It's like gold. Everything. That's, like, that's what you want for entertainment value, right? Like yeah. you want that entertainment. Um, Daniel saying that anyone that pretty should be in a dress. Uh, Daniel, if there were, if there are kids watching, um, I'm not gonna hold up the finger that I'm thinking about holding up in my, on my hand right now. Um, Scotty, how do you know he's talking about you? He could be talking about me. Cause he already texted me that like once today. <laughs> yeah. He saw some baptism photos from my um, my weekend. My daughter was bap uh, baptized this weekend, so. Um, so it's, Scotty, like, it's like people are watching Beauty and the Beast. And I'll let you guess who's the beauty and who's the beast. <laughs> um, Scott is saying that the Devil's Cut wasn't that bad, but to try Kentucky Deluxe sometime. <laughs> uh, the only thing I tried worse than the Devil's Cut, I think, was the Jim Beam White Label, which was, well, just bad. <laughs> I didn't even review it. I, I, I bought a bottle of it. I thought, okay, I'm going to review it for fun because Trenny and C keep on doing these things. And I was like, I'll do it. And I was like, nah, I won't even do this review because it's just not worth it. I just couldn't do it. I love Trenny and C, man. They, they keep it light. They're they're entertaining. They're funny. They're good guys. 
they're all like literally I, I, there's no channels out there that don't offer something even like a lot of the new guys i love a lot like I, i'm a big big fan of um what's it called the, the whiskey couch from south africa i'm liking them a lot yeah. um other guys i'm liking blind whiskey reviews yeah channel coming up up and comer really liking him yeah um Jason Fisk is asking my verdict, my verdict on the Val Blair 83. Honestly, it was incredible stuff. I'm not going to grab it. It's back there, but really, really good stuff. I have some insane whiskeys back there, and those are at the back because I plan to do them closer to the end of this year so I don't forget about them. Um, but I got the Anak 1975 back there, and I got the Val Blair 1983. Uh, I have a Cavalon port cask that is fantastic back there. And I have these three that are going to be going back there as well, as well as this Tobamori 21-year-old Manzanilla. Um, so those are going to be closer to the end of the year. In June, I'm going to be doing my my uh, American Whiskey Bourbon Month. So that are, you planning on, are you planning on trying to get a master distiller on, like even from like, a Canadian distillery eventually? Um, I have – talked to I uh, this weekend I talked to a couple of them I talked to the guy from Millstone so mm -hmm. Patrick might be coming on to my channel in the next little while as well as uh, Don Livermore uh, from Wisers he's likely gonna be coming on to my channel shortly um, and other than that mainly mm -hmm. ambassadors just because that's who I'm like associating with that's who I basically talk to on a regular basis um, that's it, yeah. Uh, it's hard to get a hold of these master distillers. You gotta. Well, you got two of them, man. I have got the, you. You got me beat. I've got zero master distillers. I got one owner that came on, and the brand ambassadors. You know, I like them. They're good guys. They're coming in, but you know, they serve. They understand we serve a purpose of them. They serve a purpose. But to get a master distiller on, that's a score, man. And I'm proud of you getting two of them. That's that's. Sweet, well, we'll man. see. Nothing. Nothing. Honestly, uh, I'm a strong believer that nothing is certain until it's happening. So anything can change. I was supposed to have a guy named Robin Black on my channel. He's on TSN and he has a, a YouTube channel and that was supposed to happen a year ago. And he Robin kept, Black he used to have the punk glam band back in like the nineties. That guy, yeah. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember. He, um, he used to dress, they were like the Marilyn Manson of Canada back yeah, when I was like exactly. in the nineties. Yeah. And he's into MMA like quite a bit. So we were gonna yeah. get together and talk UFC and talk fighting and talk that sort of stuff, but uh, he got busy and his channel blew up and then it never ended up happening. So like I said, until someone's actually on my channel, I, I don't count my chickens just cause you never know. Right. Um, Daniel saying we found a way to get more out of the barrel. BS, you found a way to water down less. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. Like, is that a quote from something? It looks like he's quoting it. So I, I'm assuming it is a quote from something. I, I just want to let GoHabs know that you guys are going to pick a Chuck. You can get mad at your owner laughter, but I'm 100% sure that you guys are going to pick a Chuck. I'm just being honest. You need a Chuck. You don't need any more skilled guys in the Habs. Well, you need I'm a going to get back from Montreal because that's what they always do. And that's <laughs> No, we're getting the Russian this time. You guys go get the Czech. <laughs> I mean, get the American because that's what you're going to do. No, I. but they need him. They actually the, – the smart thing, if the Habs were smart – they would go get Kachuk yeah, and let Ottawa get the get the check. They had grit, they had skill, they had a whole bunch of different things. Yeah, but uh, I know Ottawa's going to grab them. I'm pissed because I don't want. I'd rather they go for the Swedish defenseman there. What's his name? Uh, not the not number one pick, but the second guy. <laughs> That's crazy. Diamond Whiskey Throttle has a big problem with my fantasy books up here. He thinks because I have these, like I'm, I'm doing a disservice to my channel or something like that. Daniel, Daniel has a problem with everything. He lives in Edmonton. Like honestly, what do they have in Edmonton? They got a shiny metal bat that's 12 feet tall when you're in the city. Uh, they got gunshot wounds in Edmonton. What else have they got in Edmonton? I don't know. Daniel, relax. All right, let leave Rob alone. Leave me alone. You get it. You're mad. You live in a really cold city that's got two months of summer. And the rest of the year is just freezing, and everything's buried in snow. <laughs> it's it's really cold in Edmonton on a on like a on a winter day. It's actually we had probably the coldest winter that I remember this year. 
Like yeah. there are some crazy cold days, but whenever I would talk to Daniel, I'd feel better <laughs> because it's just insanely cold there. At least move to Calgary. Come on, it's like nice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, um, all that would, yeah. quick, uh, quick opening thoughts on this art bag grooves excellent stuff um, definitely on the palette you get more of that Isla style you get that ashy uh, iodine rubbery type uh, note from the peat um, on the nose it kind of tricks you because you're thinking you're drinking like something a little bit more like Hila, Highland style peat because it's um kind of barbecue note style. And I don't know much about what this is all about. I have to do my research before I review it, but overall my first impressions are very good. Well, my overall impressions of this Octomore that you sent me is, um, I, I'm, I'm going to keep it clean. I was about to say something. I was like, I'm on Rob's channel. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's impeccable. It's wonderful. It, it's beautiful and I want to buy a bottle immediately. Yeah. It's, you know what? That seven point four is one of the ones that you could still pick up mm. at various locations. So um, I want to rub this on a Philly Mignon. It's just so <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Thank you. So, really thank you for sending me this one. You're welcome, man. Thank you for the samples you sent me. They were both excellent. So, Thanks. Well, well the rum is very affordable. I don't know. Do they have plantations at the uh, LCBO? They have only the one version. It's just a regular standard plantations version. Um, like I think it's forty three percent or forty percent, something like that. Nothing. Oh, is it the plantation twentieth anniversary? Uh, yeah, that's the one actually. Yeah, yeah I got, I got them. It's it's good, but it's not worth buying. I, I have it in that. Sorry. Right. Um, I got a bottle of Diplomatico because people were bugging the crap out of me. So I'll be reviewing that shortly on my channel. All right. Then. There was a there was a Cuban rum that I tried recently. It was from directly from Cuba when my brother in law went there. It was phenomenal. We like unfortunately too many of us got a hold of it in one night and it was gone in the same night. So um, really good stuff. But uh, with that, I want to get these guys to make sure that they head over to your channel and hit subscribe. I want you to give these guys a quick run through of what to expect. I know you did that once, but just quick summary of what to expect. And, and then I think uh, we'll call it. We'll, we'll talk after uh, off the uh, line. Yeah. All right. So on my channel, I'm just going to be quite blunt and honest about what I try to produce on my channel. The, the focus is I'm trying to produce honest reviews with a bit of a comical twist, not too much, but like, you know, I try to be myself. I want you guys to get to kind of know me and understand where I'm coming from as a middle-class worker who likes drinking whiskey and it's gosh, very expensive. So I'm trying to let people know who are in the, let's say 30 to $80,000 a year annual income range on what to buy and what to drink. And that's all. Case is subjective though, of course, as always. So you, you might not agree with me, but uh, I'll always give you my honest opinion. I'll tell you how I feel. Even uh, people have seen me when I interview ambassadors, I put them to task all the time. And I just try to be honest. And I want to know, like, you know, the truth about whiskey. It's a bit of uh, my issue. So that's what I'm trying to do. That's what I'm trying to bring. And I've been doing this for three years, and I've been having a lot of fun. I'm getting to know guys like Rob, uh, that idiot in the comments, Daniel, right there, who I love to death. You got Keith, who's a good boy, too. Malton Man Cave. Go check him out. Super cool dude. Um, you know, and the rest of you guys. Hey, Claire, how you doing? That's it. Yeah, so we have subscribe, to... don't subscribe. Eh. Thank you, Rob, for having me on. It was awesome. It was. It was a lot of fun. I had a great time, bud. Uh, thank you for the samples. Thank you for coming on my channel. Um, thank you to everybody in the chat. You guys were on even before we came on, um, which is pretty awesome. You guys are awesome. That's why we keep doing this. Uh, my wife always asks me, why do you have to do a live? I'm like, because it's the best Super part of chat. it. It's the best part of this. It, it really is. We get to talk to these guys on a daily basis, um, or not, or at least a weekly basis, anyway. And that's why we're here. It feels like we're not drinking alone, right? When we drink all together in a chat or whatever else. So um, you guys are awesome. All right, and uh, I really appreciate the support. So 
check out Swami if you haven't already. Thank you very much, guys. You guys can check me out on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and uh, Patreon as well. And thumbs up Rob's video, like everybody. There's like, what, 30, 40 of you guys here I want to see, like 30 or 40 thumbs up. Don't be lazy. It takes two seconds. You go up to the top, you press that thumb. It helps Rob out if you like him and you watch him. Thumb it. All right? Don't be lazy. That's all. Have a good night. Night, guys. Thank you very much.